The greater flamingos are mostly found in Africa as they prefer to live near lakes, swamps and seas, especially where the weather is mostly tropical. The main endangerment for flamingos is loss of habitat to human development and their habitats get poisoned by pollution. In reality, all flamingo populations could undergo a rapid decline since they live in large groups in fragile wetlands that could easily become polluted. The city is doing everything in their power to stop the dumping because there are fines and there's kind of ways of, of policing that. But it's also to bind the goodwill of people because if you can stop them dumping in our rivers, then they will have a beautiful environment they can enjoy. You know, hence the cleaning of the, the Black River and you know, the animals that were there before, it's coming back like the flamingos. So for us, it's, it's worthwhile fighting that battle to not, you know, pollute and dump in our rivers and, and our water bodies, you know, wetlands, because it's just for the benefit of, of the entire Cape Town. False Bay Ecology Park project in association with the city of Cape Town are currently working on an excavation project to help preserve the ecosystem of the bird life. If we look at the wetlands itself, if we don't conserve it, if there's too much waste, if besides, like if you look at your toxic, your chemicals and things like that, and your pesticides, and if that goes into our river sources, it can harm the birds, because they are the ones drinking of the rivers and so forth. Looking at plastic, your more materialistic kind of waste, like same, similar with your fishes, they can choke on things like that. What we are being taught um, about the environment is to um, look after our environment, bring about awareness and, um, to protect our environment because if we protect our environment, our environment will look after us and that's basically logic. The city of Cape Town has been running an annual educational environmental project such as the Yes Environmental Drama Festival. Since, you know, like 2008, uh, we've been hosting this in Youth Environmental Drama Festival. We specifically focus on developing the youth's kind of, you know, around drama and the, the art of acting and script writing, but bringing in the environmental theme. So that they focus on an environmental topic and then perform a drama related to that. At the time we found out that it's very difficult to change, you know, attitudes, behavior and thinking of older people. And, and our youth is still acceptable for, for change and it's easy to challenge them and they're open for challenges. So I think it's just critical to focus on our youth. At the Cave Corp Fist Fungal Farm, the flamingos spend most of their days feeding and preening in salty coastal pans. The farm is also a camping site filled with amazing bird life that is well maintained by young Kutsia. People must realize it's actually their livelihood they're playing with because everybody needs water every day and you can't live without water. So if people are just going to pollute water, it's, it's going to have a serious effect. The flamingos will all disappear. They will all go to other places where, where they can find their food again. But because this is a salt works, hopefully the chance of, of pollution is close to zero. So this would be a stay a safe habitat for the flamingos so they can feed here and still survive here. Yeah, the environment is important to me because we travel around a lot and to see beautiful spaces with the, where the animals can live, it's clean, um, is, is very important I feel. We always try and find places that are out in nature, really away from the city, um, where you can really sort of appreciate nature and get involved again and see the animals and see particularly the bird life here. I mean, the West Coast, its bird life is something quite incredible. Mm. Ones that have studied ecology and the water systems and that sort of thing, they're the ones that must put forward their um, ideas from ground level and then push it through to the people that must listen and actually take some action about it. I think it's another very critical point is if you take the unemployment in South Africa, if you have a place like this, 
there's got to be some creation of employment. It's going to happen. It would be a natural offspin, um, spin-off, right? Mm -hmm. But um, that would happen. And I think, yeah, it's absolutely critical. And I think people like this should be supported. They should be funded. Um, we've got water resources that are drying up. Uh, so the wetlands are very critical when it comes to that. I mean, you know, it's, it's that whole, the whole of the environment, wherever people are interested in giving of themselves and putting effort in, the government should be giving 50% or, you know, so it's, it's a, it's, it's a two-way street and it's not just one person trying to do it on their own, because that's impossible. We need the funding, we really do. The greater flamingos are one of the species that are rare and they can live up to 15 to 20 years in their natural surroundings. Ecology is such a sensitive thing and many factors are interconnected. The return of the flamingos to certain rivers in the Western Cape have been a great example of the solution to the issues of how water treatment of the wetlands needs more attention for the benefits of the bird life and the ecosystem.